weekly music show at one of France's biggest festivals. Now, the 20th edition of Rock on Sen includes the likes of La Del Rey, Italian rockers, Manskin, and Mass of Attack. Here are some of the highlights. of the music festival scene. I went and chatted with frontman Serge Pizzorno at the festival. Serge Pizzorno, thank you so much for speaking to us on France 24 at Hocor Sense. Yes, now, uh, you've been touring all summer with Kasabian, you've been at the likes of Glastonbury, which is obviously you're no stranger to. Um, I'm kind of wondering, what, how do you get into the mood when you're playing a concert like at Hocon Seine? Because I read that some classics of English literature are quite helpful to you sometimes. I like to sort of feel the energy of a festival. So what I tend to do is get here, just have a look, like, you know, like a real walk around. I like to go on the stage, I like to see the crowd and then I like to just get in my room and get focused in. I will try and attempt to speak some French. I, I always try and I always get on stage and kind of blank out and go, I don't know whether I should say what I'm about to say because it might be like, I could be asking for sort of like, you know, where's the washing up liquid? We're going to give everything we've got, you know, pure love, pure joy, pure celebration. So no audio books anymore, right? I thought there was a little audio book you know what, that story around. comes from. When we did Glasgow, <laughs> it was a big old gig, right? We were headlining and the adrenaline was flying and I just wanted to do the gig. So I needed, a, uh, I needed to calm down a little bit. So my boy, Noel Fielding, we listened to a little, a Free Men in a Boat, like a weird old English. Yeah, quite a, quite a left field very choice. Left yeah, field yeah. choice, yeah. And we, we listened to that to chill out. But yeah, no, no, this, this today, needs a different approach. talk about your latest album it's your eighth studio album mm -hmm. happenings and it's actually your second one uh, since the departure of tom as frontman how did it feel to step into kind of the front man shoes was it daunting for you i never thought i would ever be the front man never wanted to but things happen things change do you want to keep it going so i had to step in but i always thought i will give people the emotion, the intention of where I was, I've seen, like something like the classics, like Underdog or LSF. Like, I can, I know those songs because they're in my blood, you know? Whether I could do it or not was another thing, but I mean, it seems to be going better than ever, really. Well, yeah, yet another number one album in the mm, UK, right? Yeah. Am I right in believing that you took some inspiration from Iggy Pop? I, do you know what? All the greats, really. Freddie Mercury and, and Jagger, uh, Lou Reed, um, you know, Liam, just to ring them off, you know. Um, so I've just kind of had my eye on all of them. And, and um, stand-up comedians as well. I really enjoy Noel Fielding and Richard Pryor. And, you know, I, I feel like their ownership of the stage is so incredible. And then to old classic movie stars as well. Like, there's a way, 
you know, like Brando will hold a screen. I don't know, I'm just analysing and trying to figure it out myself. Now, back to the album, um, can you tell me more about the song Algorithms? Because it seems to really discuss this uh, difference between being a human and artificial intelligence, which is really so topical right now. Yeah, I wrote that a year ago, and obviously the conversation's moved forward a hell of a lot. It's almost like an, uh, a national anthem for the human race. <laughs> it's so easy for uh, an algorithm to choose your clothes, to choose your music taste, to choose your films, because it learns from your taste. And But we are so unique in the fact that we can just throw curveballs and we can not necessarily fit into what people expect us to fit into so um, the line is um, they will never feel love like this it can learn from us but then the feeling that is sort of ours and very important back to the beginning, so Xavier formed back in 1997, yeah. and you've really had a kind of loyal fans since day one. Yes. Uh, but you've also kind of uh, attracted a, kind of uh, newer fans along the way. How does it feel to perform at something like Glastonbury or at Hocon Seine and see this newer generation kind of watching you and singing along to like Clubfoot, LSF, Process Beats? It must be incredible. It's lovely. What we're noticing is this whole new generation of fans want the new songs and then the old songs, they're like, oh, I didn't know that, you know, so they like sort of hearing these older songs for the first time, these big songs, and then the sort of outer ring is the sort of the, the OGs, you know what I mean? People were there from the start, so the gigs are insane because they have this new energy and this new sort of excitement. Honestly, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and it's kind of wild. We sort of got another second time round the board, like, you know? I love the video for The Darkest Lullaby. Yes. Could you possibly introduce that song for us? What about choice of video? It kind of comes from an obsession with 70s movies and it's like a group of students got a camera and they made a... They sort of made a... It's a film that got lost in the archive and it was unearthed and people are like, oh, what's this film? I never heard of it and, you know... And it is, it, and then the, musically it's like... It's a real heartbreaker song, really. But it's sort of that American radio... Like, Seven is driving music through the desert. I feel like it's that, that world. So, Joe, you best believe I'm going to ask you about CBBs yes. and your amazing CBB story time. Now, to explain to the non Brits who are watching okay. uh, this interview, what is story time and why uh, did you decide to say yes? Now, this CBBs, they, they started to do bedtime stories and then they started to get um, sort of big stars to do it. So, Tom Hardy did it famously, and I was with my wife and she was like, Oh, you should do that one day. I was like, Yeah. Maybe like if if it came on, and then at Glastonbury I was there, and they were like, "Do you want to do it?" I was like, "Of course," and I actually bought my pajamas. Hello, I'm Sergio. Tell me some of your favourite things. Mine are playing music, dancing in the sunshine, and making new friends. It's such an incredible video. It's fun. Well, Sergio from Casabian, thank you so much for speaking Pleasure. to us, and have a great gig. Merci. Hocon is taking place just a few days before the Paralympics opening ceremony right here in Paris. Now in honour, the festival is going to be showcasing the shared values between music and sports with a cultural Olympiad. So then Claus went to check out some of the events like the one right behind me. Vinyl throwing, target practice using album covers. At the Arène du Roc, sport and music come together, giving festival goers a chance to flex their competitive muscles. And there are big prizes to play for, 
tickets for the next Rock en Seine and even for the Paralympic Games. Biathlon events, wheelchair basketball workshops, just a stone's throw from the stages, so they come with a soundtrack. The rules are basically the same, but players are discovering it's not as easy as it looks. I've already played basketball using my legs, but in this case, using only my arms was a problem because I couldn't shoot a hoop, for example. It's true that a wheelchair is quite easy to maneuver. It's quite fun to test. I'm finding it easy to turn, but then going forward is really quite tricky. With 3,500 members in the Ile-de-France region, the local Parasport committee is looking to raise its profile. We know that many people with disabilities don't feel comfortable joining a sports club because of prejudice. So yes, by making Paris sports more visible, we really want to show that sport is open to all and that you can take part in all these disciplines, be it wheelchair, basketball or the biathlon, which you can see here, but also all the other disciplines. Other disciplines like climbing. This four and a half meter high boulder was made using 160 half spheres. Together they form a message in Braille. Its creator, the blind, wants to raise awareness about visual disabilities. So it's as if you had been reading Braille with the two first joints of your finger, but now you're reading it with your whole body. Your body gets up close to the disability. Some people think, OK, it's Braille, but it's a climbing wall. Aha, you can climb on Braille. And I find that by using humor, anything that's a bit subversive, ironic, you can communicate a lot of different ideas. At the foot of the wall, a guide to the Braille code helps decipher the message. It says, go up and see if I'm there, an invitation to get a little perspective before returning to the crowd. We've come to the end of this very special Arts24 music show at Hawk Sen right here in Paris. Remember, for more arts and culture, you can head to our website as well as follow us on social media. There's more news coming up on France 24 right after this.